Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. America's southwestern desert blooms to some extent each year during spring, but only once in many years does it bloom spectacularly. This is the story of one such special desert spring and how it affected some of the animals native to that habitat. Included among them are the coyote, wily hunter of the arid country, the cougar, less abundant but a powerful predator, well adapted to the desert is the badger, one of the fiercest of the mammals for its size, and the bobcat, which is widespread throughout the country. All of the predators, as well as many other mammals and birds, are active the year around, but they are most active in the spring, when the desert comes into bloom, when giant saguaro cacti become nesting sites for the birds, when the lower growth, drab and dull at other times of the year, bursts into radiant color when the season temporarily transforms the desert into a different world, green and beautiful and full of life. During this season, it is fascinating to observe the actions and interactions of the wildlife inhabiting the great Sonora Desert of Arizona in the vicinity of Tucson. Here, largely undisturbed by man, the activity of the birds and mammals and other living creatures reaches a peak during the desert spring. The transformation of the desert in spring to lush greens and brilliant colors is breathtaking. The Ocotillo now has vivid blossoms coating its limbs. Even the mighty saguaro cactus, giant of the southwestern desert, is bedecked with a multitude of sweet-smelling blossoms and becomes host to many insects. These towering sentinels in spring have their feet clad in riotous colors as numerous blossoming plants paint the desert floor. Most abundant in the lower areas, are the lovely yellow desert poppies, carpeting the harsh terrain with their buttery blooms, as if they were a multifaceted mirror on the ground reflecting the sun a million times and more. Only during one spring out of many have the rains of the previous winter been abundant enough to touch off this burst of beauty in such an arid land. At such times, the glorious blossoming of plants acts as a catalyst to all the living creatures dwelling here. This is the time of year when the larger animals become most active. A big badger, digging for food, has suddenly detected a scent which may mean danger. It's a large female cougar and her yearling cub, filled with the fever of spring and exploring their domain. Confident of its own ability to defend itself, the badger continues to dig, not anticipating any trouble. In this instance, that may not be the best idea. Cougars are the most powerful of the desert predators, but this yearling is not hunting. He's merely very curious. High in a saguaro, in an old woodpecker nest, a little whiskered owl senses a drama unfolding. It is the cub's curiosity that may create a problem, since he has never before encountered a badger. It's a powerful animal, and not to be pestered without serious results. The badger could easily injure the cub, which the yearling is beginning to realize. But as has always been the case, his mother is nearby to protect him. To the yearling, filled with springtime exuberance, it's all a game. But his mother ignores the cub's attempts at play, and concentrates instead on the badger. The mother cougar is establishing dominance over the badger. The pre
brief fight is over without injury to any of the animals. The cub, while still not afraid of the badger, has nevertheless learned to respect its refusal to flee in the face of danger. There are other places to go and things to see in this lovely springtime desert, and the rollicking mood of the cougars continues as they pass the giant saguaro. These huge cacti grow to a height of 40 feet, and the old abandoned woodpecker holes in many of them provide a safe daytime retreat for the owl. The drama it just witnessed was also seen by a coyote. It's a female who has good reason to be alert. Not far from here, in a low wash, where there is some rather heavier brush and patches of prickly pear cactus in bloom, she has a den, where only a few weeks ago she gave birth to pups. They are developing a sense of curiosity and gradually overcoming their fear of moving out of the security of their den. One, bolder than the others, begins his first venture, although somewhat unsteadily. In the weeks and months to come, he will gain confidence, probably somewhat faster than his less daring littermates. Moving out this far on his own, he has suddenly realized his mother is gone again, and his reaction is a lonely cry. The coyote must eat frequently to produce milk for her pups. So she's alert to the abrupt appearance of a little ground squirrel. The ground squirrel escaped into a burrow, so she'll have to seek elsewhere for a meal. Jutting from the newly green desert floor, are the stark mountains of the Arizona Sonora Desert. The rugged slopes sprinkled with tall saguaros provide good nesting sites for many desert birds of prey, such as the golden eagle. Having already fed rather well this morning, this magnificent bird is now content to leisurely survey his realm. The sturdy arms of the saguaro provide lookout perches for this desert's largest predatory bird. A movement nearby heralds the approach of a sidewinder rattlesnake, whose most remarkable characteristic is the strangely graceful way it moves, using its forebody as a fulcrum to pivot the body sideways in a smoothly flowing manner. This one saves itself from becoming eagle food by quickly hiding under prickly cover. Even though not seriously hunting, the eagle is tempted to make a try for a ground squirrel that has appeared nearby. The eagle, having missed the ground squirrel, has also disturbed a coiled western diamondback rattlesnake. The venomous snake is customary prey, but in this instance, the eagle's lack of real hunger makes him overcautious. The updrafts of warm air from the desert floor allow the eagle to soar effortlessly past the peaks. In its casual wanderings, the golden eagle has now entered the territory of a red-tailed hawk, which has captured a small snake to take to its cliffside nesting site as food for its chicks. The adult bird is kept very busy catching enough snakes, lizards, rodents, and other smaller animals to appease their voracious appetites. 
Even now, the parent bird's mate is also returning, a ground squirrel in her talons. One of the parent birds sets out to hunt again. Abruptly, it screams a warning. It has detected on the rocks below the big golden eagle, a decided threat to the hawk chicks. Without pause, the other adult joins her mate aloft, and both parent red tails prepare to rout the intruder. Although the eagle is not inclined to fly, the red tails intend to continue their attack until he leaves. Coming closer, so the eagle leaves to find a place more peaceful. With the eagle now out of their territory, the hawks cease their attack. The eagle unexpectedly becomes witness to a different drama of the springtime desert. A thick bodied lizard, the Gila monster, has ventured into the open and is exposed to attack. That attack will not come from the eagle, but rather from a marauding bobcat in search of an easy meal. It's not a very wise selection of prey. The Gila monster has an ugly temper and a venomous bite, although the poison is not injected like a snake's. Instead, if it can grab its enemy and hold on, the many sharp teeth will puncture the flesh. This lets the poison from glands in the mouth penetrate into the wound. If the venom gets into the bloodstream, it can be deadly to an attacker. bite on his paw causes the cat to shake it with pain. The bite hurts, but is not too serious. If the bobcat wants a meal, he'll have to seek out less dangerous prey. Having spent this morning exploring the beautiful spring desert, the cougar and her cub have now returned to their den to rest. It has been a busy day, and both of the big cats are tired. In summer, most of their wanderings will be at night, when it is cooler. Even now, during spring, it doesn't take much effort to become overheated. The appearance of an occasional honeybee here is not uncommon, but today they seem to be especially active. However, it's something else that takes the cub's attention. A movement in a scraggly tree turns out to be the bobcat, still hungry and alert for prey. Below him, he has spotted a ground squirrel.
The ground squirrel's erratic movements momentarily confuse the bobcat. The loss of the prey is no great tragedy for the bobcat. The ground squirrels seem to be everywhere. All this activity has been of considerable interest to the young cougar watching from the den. He can't resist heading out toward where the bobcat has moved into their territory. Unaware that he's been watched, the bobcat has returned to the tree to eat his prey leisurely. The bobcat has seen the cougar. The bigger cat is now hesitating because very close to him on the same branch is a large swarm of honeybees clustering over their queen, en route to making a new hive. They won't bother the cat if they're not bothered. The bobcat moves directly above the bees and the cougar is now intent on routing the intruder. The cougar has forgotten about the bees. While the yearling cougar is occupied, the bobcat leaves with his prey. The young cougar has been stung a number of times, and it's a lesson well learned. Still smarting from being stung by the bees, the cub is not very interested in a newcomer, the desert gopher tortoise. This gentle, lumbering reptile is making the most of the desert spring, consuming as he wanders large quantities of delectable succulent greens. Neither the slow-moving gopher tortoise nor the cougar are of particular interest just now to the big golden eagle, still perched nearby. He's intent on a large gopher snake just emerging from a hole looking for food. However, the snake doesn't find a big passing centipede to be suitable prey. That's because the many-legged creature is equipped with a pair of poisonous claws used in defense or to immobilize prey. But the gopher snake, a non-venomous species, intent on finding something to eat, is a bit too incautious in emerging from hiding. Only a few feet away, and detected too late for retreat, is its great enemy, the striped skunk which eats almost any snake and is not bluffed by the reptile's threatening posture. knows the battle is nearly over as the snake is weakening rapidly. The noise of their struggle is of little interest to the passing mother cougar, again on the prowl after her rest. Joining her from off to one side is the cub. The pain of his bee stings has greatly eased now and he is rapidly regaining his usual exuberance.
everywhere, spring is strongly in evidence. In a bristly-spined shoya cactus, a curved-billed thrasher is at her nest feeding insects to her demanding chicks. No matter how often she feeds them, the young birds always seem to want more. By utilizing the sharp-spined Shoya cactus as a nesting site, the curved-billed thrasher keeps its chicks reasonably safe from most predators. The young cougar has been watching the feeding activity of the birds for quite a while. Abruptly, the yearling realizes that his delay has let his mother get far ahead, and now she's coming back to see what's keeping him. The mother and her cub have been inseparable since his birth last year. But their days together will soon end. As autumn comes, she will send him on his own. And with luck, he will experience many another desert spring. Spring in the desert is especially spectacular following a winter of heavier than usual rainfall. It's a time when every harsh, prickly plant abruptly becomes a thing of great beauty. Unfortunately, in many areas, the American deserts are gradually being taken over by what we call progress, the encroaching interests of man. It is important for us not only to preserve and protect the desert for its annual pageant of glorious color, but equally because it is a crucial year-round habitat of a wide variety of animals. Man and nature can live in harmony. They must if we and those who follow us are to enjoy the benefits and beauty of the arid regions of the wild kingdom.